Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video, I'll be going over all the heat pump parts and their functions, what they do. Now, if you're surprised that I just called this air conditioner a heat pump, you're not alone. When I just started out in the field and I was absolutely clueless about many things, I used to think that a heat pump was some kind of a water heater. It was a revelation to me when I found out that a heat pump is actually a regular looking air conditioner with some extra parts in it. The difference between an air conditioner and a heat pump is that a straight air conditioner, it uses refrigerant to take heat out of the house and bring it outside. Whereas a heat pump, it can reverse the flow of refrigerant, which causes it to take the heat from outside and bring it inside. So that was a simple explanation of the difference between the two of them. Now in this video, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the parts that a heat pump has, which an air conditioner does not. If you're interested about all the other stuff like the capacitor and the start device and the compressor and all of that, I have another video called AC Parts and Functions where I go over a regular air conditioner. So if you're interested in more details, you can check that video out as well. So let's begin. One of the differences between a heat pump and an air conditioner is that most air conditioners will stand right on the floor on some kind of a slab, whereas a heat pump will have a little stand under it, like this one. And the reason for that is simply that the heat pump can sometimes run while there's snow on the floor. So if you have one or two feet of snow, it's gonna cover up half of the coil if this unit is sitting on the floor. So to prevent that, they raise it off the floor. So if the heat pump is running in heating mode, the snow is not gonna impede the operation. If we look at the ports where you would hook gauges up to check the refrigerant pressures, on a heat pump, there's a third port. On this unit, it's right over here, or sometimes it can be inside of the unit as well. Because a heat pump can reverse the flow of refrigerant, this suction line would become a discharge line. So if you're gonna add refrigerant in the heating mode, you would not add it through this line, you would add it through the true suction line, which would be this port right over here. If you're adding refrigerant in cooling mode, then you would do it like normal. You would either add it through here, or if you wanted to, you could add it through here. If we look in the electrical section, everything is the same except the heat pump will also have a defrost control board. And that is because when the unit is running during the winter, when it gets colder, sometimes it'll start to ice up or freeze over. When that happens, the temperature sensor that's inside mounted on a pipe, I can show you that a little bit later, that will trigger this control board to go into a defrost mode. And what happens is it turns it to cooling mode and it turns the condenser fan off, which builds up the head pressure or basically the pressure in the pipes on this outdoor unit. The pressure goes up, which increases the temperature and that thaws out or defrosts this outdoor coil. While the heat pump is in defrost mode, what usually happens is that the indoor backup heat source, whether it be electrical heat strips or a gas furnace, that will turn on to compensate for the time while this is off. So while it's defrosting, the indoor unit will turn on to heat the house. Or another scenario is if it gets too cold outside, usually if it's below 30 degrees, you can set different heat pumps to different settings on the thermostat. But usually when it goes below 30 degrees outside, then the system will switch over to using the emergency heat or the backup heat source all the time and not even use the heat pump at all. When it warms up a little bit outside, then the system will once again start using the heat pump for the heating. Now let's take a look inside of the heat pump. Sometimes if it's a convenient heat pump, a lot of these components are gonna be outside the coil so you can access them easier. On this one, I have to take the whole top off just to get to all of this. But there are some interesting parts in here. So this over here is the reversing valve. That is the main component that a heat pump has which an air conditioner does not. That reversing valve is the one that switches the flow of refrigerant or basically reverses the flow of refrigerant. And when it does that, that makes the condenser coil outside the evaporator, and it makes the evaporator coil inside the condenser. They kind of switch roles. This reversing valve has a plastic piece inside of it that moves back and forth, depending whether you're in heat mode or cooling mode. And that directs the refrigerant either to go through these two pipes or these two pipes. And on the back of it, we have the electrical solenoid. This is the thing that powers it up. So once this is energized, that little plastic piece will move or switch positions. Right next to it, we have the accumulator. The purpose of the accumulator is to not allow any liquid refrigerant to get back into the compressor. Liquid refrigerant is bad for the compressor. So in order to prevent that, we have the accumulator, which catches any liquid refrigerant that gets up to this point. By the time it gets to this point where it's about to enter the compressor through the suction line, all the refrigerant should be a vapor. 
but just in case it's not, the accumulator catches the rest of the liquid refrigerant if it gets there. Another big difference between an air conditioner and a heat pump is that the heat pump will have an outdoor metering device. Whether it be a piston or a fixed orifice or a TXV, there will be two, one outdoor and one indoor. But the system does only use one of them at a time. If it's in heating mode, it'll use the one outside, and if it's in cooling mode, it'll use the one inside. And these things have a check valve inside of them, so refrigerant can flow freely one direction and it gets restricted or metered when it's going the other direction. That's how they achieve only using one of them at a time. If we look further down, we have our low pressure switch and high pressure switch. Those just turn off the unit if the pressure gets too low or if the pressure gets too high. Next in line, we have the filter dryer. And on a heat pump, this is a bi-flow filter dryer, which means it can either go that direction or that direction. On a normal air conditioner, these are usually directional. You can only have refrigerant flowing through them one way. And the purpose of the filter dryer is to catch any moisture or debris that may have gotten into the refrigeration system. Usually you will only find these on the discharge line, on the thin line. It's pretty rare when you see a filter dryer on the suction line. And if you look at this thing over here, which looks similar to that filter dryer, this is a muffler. And its purpose is very simple, and that's to dampen the noise of the compressor so it's not obnoxious and disturbing the local piece. And even further down, we have our thermal limit. That measures the temperature of this copper line right there, which also indicates when the defrost control board will trigger defrost mode. When this gets cold enough, it'll go into defrost. And these two black wires right over here go to the crankcase heater, which is usually under the compressor or around the bottom of it. And that's to warm the compressor if it's really cold outside to make sure that the oil inside stays warm. Well guys, and those are pretty much all the parts that a heat pump has, which an air conditioner does not. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to mash that like button and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, let me tell you about these three old sisters that just finished having dinner. One of them is 90 years old, second one 91, third one 92. So they just finished having dinner, two of them decided to have some tea, and the third one went upstairs to take a bath. She filled up the tub, she steps into it with one foot, and she stops. And about a minute later she yells down to her two sisters, Hey, do you remember if I was getting into the tub or getting out of the tub? The second sister yells back, I don't know, let me go upstairs and check. And she starts walking up the stairs, she gets halfway, and she stops. And she yells to her other two sisters and says, Hey, do you remember, am I going upstairs or downstairs? And the third sister, that is still in the kitchen, she says, Ah, oh, you two crazy old woman, you always forget everything. I'll come help you both out right after I go see who's at the door.